Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Say what needs to be said, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Forgive me for my sins, Lord, so my prayers will not be hindered, Lord God. Bless your people, Lord God, on today. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, y'all. Let me see if I can turn on this microphone so I can make sure y'all can hear me loud and clear. One second, please. God is good, y'all. He has given the word. I pray y'all can hear me better now. Amen. Um. So, yeah, God is so good. And I have just been before him. And let me get right into it because I want to make this video as short as I possibly can make it. Amen. Um. So, do you feel called to the prophetic ministry? Y'all, like I said, again, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me, wild woman, today. But it's okay. Hear the message. Amen. Don't look at the messenger. Hear the message. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Do you feel called to the prophetic ministry? If you do, this message is definitely for you. Now, you have to understand that the prophetic ministry is the fivefold. It's not just um, only prophets. Amen. But in particular, I'm going to be speaking to prophets today or prophetic people. Amen. You may have the prophetic gift. So that's why I say prophetic ministry. Amen. I heard the Lord loud and clear when he told me I was called to the prophetic ministry. So that is my ministry. Hallelujah. So I'm going to be obedient because you know what? You know what's helping me? Because sometimes people is not going to understand you. Hello? People is not going to understand you. They're not going to understand the call that you have on your life. Hallelujah. They're not going to understand the visions that God give you. But when God give you these visions and he give you these dreams and they start to come to pass, then you can't do nothing but be a believer. You're going to have to be like Job and say, I've heard you, but now I have seen you. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Amen. You have dreams and you have visions. I need you guys. Please hear me very clearly. Write down whatever God gives you. Please put a journal by your bed so that when you wake up or use your iPad or your notes to write down these dreams. Because I'm, I want to tell you, I have probably missed out and probably could have been a lot further in my walk. If I had been doing this in the beginning, but when I would begin to have these dreams and I would begin to try to talk to people around me, they would try to look at me like I was crazy. Like, and they would tell you, oh, you just had too much pizza and this and this and that. So I began to disregard the gifts that God gave me. Now, if you sleep, it's told in statistics about 20 years of your lifetime. Imagine all of the times that God is talking to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You leading me right into my message. Amen. Y'all, if I if y'all see me looking down, I'm looking at my notes. Amen. So Joel 2 and 28 is where God had me in the scriptures. Amen. So let me read that really quick. It says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on, upon all flesh, upon all flesh, upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Excuse me, I'm just, I need to put this gum out of my mouth. Forgive me, y'all. <laughs> Forgive me, y'all. I'm so sorry. I was trying to keep it. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old man shall dream dreams. Dream dreams. Not just dream, but dream dreams. Amen. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handsmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and the earth. Blood and fire, pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in the Mount Zion and Jerusalem shall be deliverance. Hallelujah. As the Lord hath said in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. My God. That is such a good word right there. Amen. Now, if you're a prophetic person, you can see in the spirit realm. Amen. Because the way that God has wired you is that your mind is open to spiritual things. Your mind is open to God. You are wired differently than everybody else. Amen. Certain things will be illuminated to you. Certain things will um, speak out to you. They'll be bold to you. Like you, for instance, um, a person can see one thing, but then you see it and God can speak to you through that thing. And so that person is looking at you like, what? It, it's just, it's just a billboard. Like, what? what's the problem? <laughs> like, but God is speaking to you through it. Okay. You can read the scripture and it illuminates itself to you. Somebody else can read that same scripture and just be like, okay, I understand. But for you, it could do something like completely different. I'm just saying this to try to, I'm trying to give a child an example of everybody's not going to see how you see because you're not wired the same. It does not mean that you're better. It just means that you're wired differently for a specific function and a specific purpose. Okay. So let me go to my notes. So I had a dream. Okay, I had a dream. That's what led me to Joel 2 and 28. And then 
after that I kept on seeing a couple of times actually I was seeing Joel and I'm like okay God you must want me to go to, to Joel right and sometimes as a prophetic person you will try to be like Jonah come on now I got to talk to my people I got to talk to my people you'll try to run from who you are but God say there ain't no running from me there's no running from that purpose and that call that he put on your life amen you are who you are. You cannot change that. Amen. So I come on here to do this because God says, I want a company of prophets. I want my prophets to get together. I want my prophetic people to get together. I want my evangelists to get together. I want my healing ministers to get together. Amen. Because that's something that he wants to do in the body of Christ. Amen. Now, he told me to title this message. Back then, they didn't want me. Uh, y'all can finish that y'all know the rest amen now i don't listen to that type of music no more i don't listen to it no more but we was there we heard it before amen that was in my spirit that's what i heard amen company of prophets prophetic ministry is what he told me to title the video as well so this is what i observed i have observed witchcraft it's just running rampant amen but now more than ever it's it's really really rampant because the enemy had brought the attack in 2020 to try to stop the church. Amen. Now, this could have been um, prevented. It could have actually been um, not so severe. But many people in the church were not listening to the prophets. I'll let that sit. They don't want to hear that. But it's the truth. Actually, I thank God for K. Nash who actually brought. Shout out to K. Nash. Shout out, shout out. Amen. Give honor to what honor is due. Amen. She actually brought that revelation up that God had brought. And you know what? A lot of us have been feeling it, but she had enough boldness to actually put it out there. Amen. Now, I've observed witchcraft in the church. Now, I was young coming up. Now, I got baptized, born again in the Holy Spirit in 2015. So, I'm from the hood. I didn't grow up in church, so I don't know church lingo. So, I'm just learning these things. And then... um. I would, I would sense these things. I would have feelings. I would have knowings. But again, like I said, many people would just, you know what I'm saying? Like, just act like you, you, you ain't nothing, right? Okay, but that's okay because God says, keep your heart pure. Amen. Now, many of these churches, a lot of prophetic people were called to. To share their gift because you have to realize that the fivefold ministers are gifts to the body of Christ. They're there to equip the body of Christ so that those, um, the people that they're equipping is to go out and um, they're equipped enough for ministry. Thank you, Holy Spirit. They are equipped enough for ministry. And a lot of people was getting it confused thinking that it's just all about titles and I'm leading you and I'm controlling you and I'm manipul manipulating you. But in fact, the fivefold ministry is actually to equip the ministers to go out and start ministries to be ministers of blazing ministers amen and so we just got to get back on track amen and you know what I, I am excited because i know that god is doing that thing and sometimes that hurt guys i know it hurt but we have to go through it because god knows that no matter what we'll pray his prophetic people will pray amen and the devil thinks that he's doing something but he don't even realize that He's only pushing more so God's purpose. Now, it may take a little bit longer. He may try to hinder it, but God is still going to prevail. Hallelujah. I hope that my air is not um, getting in the way. So, this is what I wrote. Let me go back to my notes so I can stay on track. So, um, the Jezebelic spirit or witchcraft or manipulative controlling spirit will interrupt the plan of God to push the prophets or the gift out. Thus slowing the move of God. But God. Enemy meant bad, but god turned it around for our good you have to be like joseph you have to be like job so they went through the same type of things because they were prophetic but what happened is god told um these individuals that were hurt that were done wrong to turn around and pray for these individuals or bless the people that cursed them bless the people that did them wrong bless the people that meant bad for them amen so as a prophetic person god wants me to tell you that you have to be mature you have to get healed. You have to go through a healing and deliverance. You know, like, uh, I would say seasonally, every three to four months, and even more than that if you need it, depending on the magnitude of your ministry, depending on how many people you are touching. Come on, somebody, because there's fiery darts that the enemy is throwing at. You think that the, the devil ain't trying to smash your head in? You think the devil want to see you prevail? You think that the devil ain't sending witches against you? Come on, somebody. So you got to be mature. You got to get healed. You got to go through your deliverance. And for me, I can go to ministers, um, a healing ministers. I'll put some in the, um, the, my, the comment box. I hope I remember in the name of Jesus. But if I don't, I know for sure Apostle Hopkins is one. He's a great one. He's a general. Hallelujah. He's a really, really mighty one. But there's also got to show me there's going to be more deliverance ministers that are going to be rising up. And don't say I'm too young. Hallelujah. 
be like Jeremiah. You are not too young. Amen. Go read Jeremiah 1, what God told Jeremiah. Amen. God wants a company of prophets to start getting together. He wants us to start getting around some real, truly Holy Ghost filled prophets. Amen. I was reading in the scriptures last night and it was saying that the word was written by um, holy men who were inspired by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take flight. Keep your heart pure. Enemy wants to taint you. Why does he want to taint you? Because he don't want you to be holy. Because when you're holier, you're. You, it's not that you lose your anointing, um, but like Samson, you, you go through, um, you're not as sharp as you could be. You'll become dull. So he wants to taint you. So make sure that you stay pure, guys. Please, in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody walking around here talking about hyper grace. Now, I believe in grace. Hallelujah. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Come on, somebody. But there's levels to this. There comes a point in time where you can't keep on doing the same thing that you once was doing. He said, come as you are, but don't stay as you are. And that's what people got it all twisted. Oh, there's grace. There's grace. No, we know that there's grace. Hallelujah. But don't play with God. God is, uh, he is not soft. Amen. God has grace. God is love, but he is not soft. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So forgive them. They know not what they were doing. It could be family. It could be friends. Even some leaders, y'all. Come on. Because the enemy will use anybody. Just like he did uh, with Peter. Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. So you can't take offense to it because offense will put you in jail. You will be locked up in your own jail. And then what happens is God will have to move on and use somebody else. God wants to use you. He will wait for you. But just like he told Samuel, somebody saying qualified. Okay. Just like he told Samuel. How long you gonna mourn? <laughs> Come on, y'all. God is about his purpose. Fulfilling his purpose. You in a, uh, a marriage, you got a spouse, and and, and the, um, the purpose is not getting fulfilled. You think God is um, keep on waiting around playing with that? Come on, he's saying y'all better get it together. Because if not, we're going to we're gonna have to move on. Whether y'all together, y'all not together. Hallelujah. Now, he wants you to be together. But if you can't get it together to, to fulfill the will that God has on your life and has on her life and come together in agreement and understand, hey, yeah, it's a, a, about us being married and about us um, being fruitfully married. But at the same time, we got to fulfill this call that God don't has on our life. And we got to understand when it's time to go, go to war, when it's time to minister, when it's time to be wife. We got to understand what hats we got on. And then you got to understand when I go back to leaders, sometimes leaders miss it. King missed it. He was a king. King, um, king David missed, excuse me, and he was a king. That just lets you know that sometimes leaders are going to miss it, but that don't mean we judge them. We pray for them. We be like Joseph and Job. We pray for them. Amen. For they know not what they do. Matter of fact, we be like Jesus. Hallelujah. We be like Jesus. Hallelujah. I know it might be bad grammar, but good gospel. I'm trying to get this word out, y'all. So y'all repent and have them and, and be careful because they'll repent. And then you'll be in error because they didn't repent for what they did wrong because God will show them. God, in fact, he will use the foolish thing to confine the wise. And most of the time, can I just be honest with you? If you're a prophetic person or you're a prophet, you are that foolish person. You are that foolish thing. Excuse me. You are that foolish thing. God will use you. So you can't be like prideful. If you are a prophet or a prophetic person, you cannot be prideful. You have to be mature. I'm telling you. Because, baby, they're going to use you. They're going to want that gift. And that's what it's for. It's for them. But when you need something, you're not going to have too many people that's going to be able to help you. I'm sorry. The only person mainly most of the time that's going to be able to help you is Jesus. Yeah, you're going to be like, well, what about me? But you just got to be okay. You got to know that it's gonna, God is going to send you help. Trust me. Now, don't think it's just going to be. You ain't going to have no help. But it's going to be very, 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 very few and, few and in between. I'm sorry. I just got to be real with you. That's why your prayer life has to be strong. That's why you have to get in that word. It's too many um, prophetic people that are really, really high in the spirit, but are not grounded in the word of God. God said time out for that. It's time out for that. Yeah, you got dreams. Yeah, you see visions. But you do you have the word? Because Jesus is the word. Now, if you don't got the word, you all you you in error and you're going to have to get you have to get it together. I'm sorry. I love you so much. I love you enough to tell you the truth. And you got to um, know that God uses you however he wills. You made him Lord and Savior, right? Or just Savior. He is the potter and you are the clay. God will twist things, turn things. I mean, I'm actually in the process of God turning some things around for me right now. And I'm like, God, what? What you doing? I'm doing a new thing here. I said, you said I was Lord, right? I love y'all. Y'all be blessing them.